Today, the New Zealand time machine housing pivot bites. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, that is post covering finance and prop news with a distinctively Australian flavour. New Zealand housing is a significant bellwether for other markets, seeing as pricing peaked early due to excessive stimulus associated with COVID, and then the central bank started to lift the cash rate ahead of other central banks. So now we are seeing the impact spilling out into the housing sector. And given that now in Australia, all the banks here have brought forward their expectation for rate rises to mid-year in Australia, Westpac, for example, changed their view, as I reported yesterday, we should expect the trends from New Zealand to be a leading indicator for Australia. And in fact, Australia's largest second bank hiked fixed rates for the ninth time in the last six months. Yesterday, Westpac lifted fixed rates for owner-occupiers and investors by up to 0.3 percentage points. Less than five months ago, Westpac still had fixed rates, starting with a 1. Today, the bank's lowest fixed rates now start with a 3, said Sally Tyndall, ratecity.com.au research director. Australia's second largest bank has hiked fixed rates repeatedly in response to rising funding costs, with some rates soaring by 2.4 percentage points in less than a year. CBA, NAB and ANZ are still offering one-year fixed rates under 3%, but it's hard to see that lasting long. And according to the latest ABS data, the proportion of new fixed rate borrowing as a total of all borrowing has plunged to 28%. In the month of February, it was 46% July last year. It's no wonder borrowers are starting to turn their back on fixing, particularly if they're looking at the big four bank rates, Tyndall said. People who are still looking to lock in a rate would do well to shop around beyond the big four banks there are still two fixed rates under 2%, but they're only for one-year terms. Now back to New Zealand. In New Zealand, as interest.co.nz reported, Westpac, the last of the main banks over there, has also moved to raise home loan rates. Though, like two other rivals, Kiwi Bank and BNZ, they have refrained from raising their 3.99% one-year fixed rate. The net result of those changes leaves them with the lowest 12 and 18 month fixed rates among the majors and with the lowest four and five year fixed rates as well. This round of increases was kicked off by ANZ on Monday, March the 28th and has taken until Friday, April the 7th to wash through all financial institutions. Given the speed at which wholesale rates have been rising over this time, that seems like a slow burn. On Monday the 28th, the two-year swap rate in New Zealand was 3.17%. On Thursday, April the 7th, it had risen to 3.57%. That 40-plus basis point rush would generally have motivated bank treasurers to push through increases faster than they have. Possibly the early movers, ANZ and ASB, are thinking about another rise soon. But with dawdlers around, the competitive risk is rising, especially as home loan activity is sagging. Of course, there will be more transactions from rollovers than new ones generated by real estate sales activity, but banks will be feeling the top coming off their mortgage activity with lower market churn. So every successful transaction is now more valuable. And Westpac, by the way, also announced 10 basis points to 30 basis point increases in term deposit rates with the popular durations at the low end. Now, also in New Zealand, the QV House Price Index has experienced its largest drop in more than a decade, with the main centres currently taking the brunt of the impact of rising interest rates and tightening bank credit. The average home decreased in value by down 0.6% nationally over the past three months to the end of March, down from a 2.3% rise in quarterly growth that we saw in February, with the national average value now sitting at $1,046,000. Kiwi dollars. This represents an average annual increase of 18.3% down from 22.9% annual growth last month. In the Auckland region, the average value now sits at $1.5 million, falling 1.5% over the past three months, an annual growth of 18.6% down from 23.2% in February. 
Kiwi General Manager David Nagel commented, we're seeing quite a rapid decline in the rate of annual growth, especially compared to the early months of 2021 when the market was peaking. Now we're seeing much slower growth months and even some value contraction in early 2022. This is particularly prevalent in the main centres where some of the largest value increases over the past two years have occurred. Agents are reporting a bounce in sales volumes for March after a very slow start to the year, but levels are still well down on previous years, primarily due to the recent rise in interest rates and changes to credit lending rules. With the massive rise in listings over the past couple of months, the balance of power has shifted firmly into the hand of buyers after such a prolonged period of it being a seller's market, he said. 14 of the 16 major urban areas that QV monitors have seen a reduction in the rate of three monthly value growth from the February data, with just Marlborough and and Queenstown Lake values holding firm with last month's quarterly growth rates. Last month, we saw just two major urban areas register reduction in values over the three-month period of February, but this month we've seen seven of the 16 areas showing a reduction in value levels. And if you look at just March in isolation, there are now nine of the 16 urban areas showing a value decline, including the main centres of Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington, Christchurch and Dunedin, he said. And for the future, Mr Nagel says there remains a lot of international uncertainty with the Russia-Ukraine conflict looking like it's set to continue for some time, business uncertainty on the pace of the economic recovery, as well as the continued battle with COVID-19, and how all of those will impact inflation and interest rates. While recent immigration applications are encouraging, the majority of these are already in New Zealand, with new arrivals not expected until later in 2022. And meanwhile, there are real concerns that the number of New Zealanders likely to be leaving New Zealand, eroding housing demand further. We'll likely see a continued gradual decline in value levels for some of the locations that experienced the greatest value growth between 2020 and 2021, while the regions will likely continue to see a mix of stagnancy growth over the coming 12 months. Mr Nagel added, Home values have dipped 1.5% across the Auckland region this quarter following two straight months of negative growth. Papuka was down 3.3%, North Shore was down 2.3%, Auckland City was down 2.3%, and they saw the biggest quarterly declines, with Rodney standing alone as the only district in the Auckland region showing any significant home value growth at 1.4% higher over the last three months. The average home value in the wider Auckland region is now $1.5 million. And local QV registered valuer Hugh Robson commented the Auckland market has continued to slow down over the past four to five months, with a number of suburbs now showing a slight drop in price levels. This confirms the market has changed from what we experienced in 2020 and 2021. Bank interest rates continue to creep up and higher and tighter government lending rules continue to have an impact on the market. In recent years, many of the sales across Auckland were to developers who were buying their next building site for redevelopment or investors who were land banking. However, with this change in the market, along with a shortage of certain building materials, several developers have become tentative and decided to sit tight and delay construction to avoid being caught with a brand new development and a lack of buyers. Despite this, Robson observed high prices being paid for premium properties in sort of locations such as waterfront properties in Hearn Bay, Westmere and St Mary's Bay. And in Wellington, average home values have declined right across the greater Wellington region through the first three months of 2022. By far the biggest reduction in average home values has occurred in Hutt City, with the three-month rolling average currently sitting down 5.2% following four consecutive months of declines. But the average decline across the entire region was down 1.5%, with values still up by 13.7% over the past 12 months. QV senior consultant Blake Nagru said the stats showed a continuing fall in the market. It's now more evident that Wellington is becoming a buyer's market. Developers are reducing asking prices and properties are sitting on the market for longer and typically selling below or at asking price. It's a clear indication that the higher interest rates and tougher lending conditions, coupled with the increase in supply, are having an impact on the market. Although the government had given direction to soften lending rules on creditworthy borrowers in March in the wake of the dip in the market, he said it was unknown if that would help ease the current dip. Open home attendance remains low, particularly at the lower end of the market, which is more heavily finance driven. However, there has also been a significant increase in listings, given buyers more options, he added. And that's really the point. So you can see the DNA of the housing market changing 
with higher interest rates, leading to more listings, leading to lower sales and fall in prices. And you can expect more of that ahead because the banks will go on putting their rates up more. And I don't think that the prospect going forward is particularly positive for house prices. In fact, I think that those New Zealand falls will continue and perhaps even accelerate. And remember that the Reserve Bank in New Zealand did signal a fall of up to 20% in some areas. And by the way, today in the financial stability review from the RBA, they're talking about a 15% fall in house prices over the next year or so. So what that tells me is that the market is on the turn. And if you want to understand how it's going to play out in Australia, go look across the ditch. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.